Okay, lesson 10 7, special segments in a circle. And there's a circle with all kinds of segments in it. All right, here's your big rule for the day. If two chords intersect in a circle, then the products of the measures of the segments of the chords are equal. Okay? Once again, we should probably discover this and do some things with patty paper, but we do not have time. So here's your rule. AE, this piece, times EC, this piece, is equal to BE, which is this piece, times ED, which is that piece. Oh yeah. Okay. So um, I don't even want to try to come up with numbers. I'm going to show you with this example right here. Example one, we wanted to find X. It's as simple as this. 8 times this piece, which is X, is equal to 9 times this piece, which is 12. So 8x is equal to 108. So now I solve for x. I get x is equal to 1, and then I have a 3, and then I think it's a half. So 13.5. Yep, that's it. Example 2, let's try it again. Um, 6 times x is equal to 5 times 15. Well, that seems really easy, doesn't it? Okay, so 5 times 15, I believe, is 75. Divide by 6, um, 12.5. <laughs> That's all it is. Remember, these chords, these have to be chords, and they have to bisect each other, not bisect, uh, cross each other, or intersect each other in a circle. All right, now, <clears throat> notice this is not two chords. We actually have a couple of secants. So here's the rule. If two secant segments are drawn to form to a circle from an exterior point, and the product of the measures of one secant segment and its eternal external secant segment is equal to the product of the measures of the other secant segment and its eternal external secant segment. What? Don't write that down, please. Draw the picture would be good, and then do this, or something like it that simplifies this a little bit for all of us. Okay, here's what we got, AB. Here's what I'm gonna say. Your outside times the full length is equal to the outside times the full length. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. So here we go. The outside, oops, sorry that's bad drawing, 8 times the full length, uh-oh, the full length, uh-oh, it's not x, it's not 8, it's 8 plus x, is equal to the outside times the full length. The full length on that is 24 plus 10, which is 34. So if I keep going here, distributive property, 64 plus 8x is equal to 340. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry there, I want to solve 4x, so I take 340, subtract my 64, I get 8x is equal to 276, divide by 8, I get x is equal to 34.5. Okay, that is the example right there. <clears throat> outside times the full length is equal to outside times the full length. Here we go again. Very similar, but watch out. Okay, outside is x. The full length is not 24, it's not x, it's actually x plus 24. Is equal to the outside, which is 25, times the full length, which I believe is 52. Okay, now we're gonna take everything and distribute. Now I've got an x squared. A lot of us right now should be going, oh, an x squared, what does that mean again? What am I gonna do? Oh yeah. We are going to use A, either the quadratic formula, or we're going to factor. The problem with factoring is that sometimes factoring doesn't work. Let me move this over a little bit. 
However, we can always use the quadratic formula, which I think we'll do in this case. <clears throat> All right, here we go. You cannot use the quadratic formula unless you have it set equal to zero. So I have to subtract the 1,300. Boy, that's going to be a big number, isn't it? So, oh yeah, what's the quadratic formula? x equals x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. a is your coefficient of x squared, b is your coefficient of x, and c is your constant term there at the end. So I actually have 1 for the a. So b is 24, the opposite of that is going to be negative 24, plus or minus the square root of 24 squared minus 4 times a times c divided by 2 times a. Oh shoot, I was going to move that up a little bit. Why don't I just go down? All right, here we go. Do the part in the parentheses first. So we've got negative 24 plus or minus the square root of 24 squared. I think I'll do that little piece of math also. That gives me 576 and then 4 times 1300 is 5,200, but it's going to be a negative 5,200 over 2. Okay, now minus negative means I take 576 minus negative, which is plus, and I'm getting 5776. I'm going to keep scrolling down here. So negative 24 plus or minus the square root of 57 or 5,776 divided by 2. And if I take that and find the square root nicely, it comes out to be a perfect square. So I got negative 24 plus or minus 76. 76 trombones in the big parade. Okay, now, quick review. You're going to take negative 24 plus 76 divided by 2, and then we'll simplify that. Negative 24 minus 76 divided by 2. So negative 24 plus 76 is 52 over 2, negative 24 minus 76, and then we divide by 2, gives me um, negative 100 divided by 2. So this is going to be 26, and this is going to be negative 50. Now, which would work for x? Our x is a length here. And it looks like negative 50 is not going to work, so I'm going to say x is equal to 26 for that little piece. <coughs> and then if you need to go back and check your work, feel free. You would take 26 times uh, the full length, which would be 50. So 26 times 50 is the 1,300. Well, we already decided this other side was 1,300 as well. So it looks like this problem is good. All right, this looks similar. We have a tangent and a secant, but actually, um, I'm not going to read that whole thing through. I am going to use the same terminology. The outside times the full length is equal to the outside times the full length. So let's see. The outside is wx. The full length of this is wx is equal to the outside, which is wz times the full length, which is wy. That's what it is. All right, here we go. Outside times the full length. Okay, well, x plus x plus 2, isn't that 2x plus 2? Is equal to the outside times the full length, which is x plus 4 again. Okay, so this is going to be a dandy. I'm going to take everything times x, so I get 2x squared plus 2x. What do I do with the math on that? i got a FOIL. Remember FOIL? First, outer, inner, last. Oh, yeah. So that's what's going to happen here. We're going to FOIL that out. i got x squared. Outside term is 4x. Inside term is 4x. Last term is 16. Now I'm going to rewrite this a little simpler. 2x squared plus 2x is equal to x squared plus 8x plus 16. Subtract x squared from both sides because we want to set this thing equal to 0. So I'm moving this over here. I get 1x squared. This is going to be subtracted over here. So I get negative 6x 
Then I'm going to subtract 16, set it equal to 0. Well, how do I solve this? I can either factor or use quadratic formula. Aha, it all is happening all over again. Um, I'm going to do factor on this one. Feel free to do quadratic formula again. Factoring means I put down two sets of parentheses. It's like reverse FOIL. What times what gives me x squared? Well, x times x. Then you look at your last term. What two numbers multiply give me 16? 1 is 16, 2 and 8, 4 and 4. I need a 6 out of this. I need my O and my I, my FOIL, my OI need to come together and become a 6. So 1 and 16, 2 and 8, or 4 and 4. I'm going to go with 2 and 8. Okay. I need a negative 8 and a positive 2. Now, you should FOIL that out to check to make sure if it's right. You just can't plop down numbers. I'm not going to spend the time doing that. Now, here's the deal. Either this piece right here has to equal 0 or this equals 0. So either x plus 2 equals 0 or x minus 8 equals 0. If I solve here, I get x equals negative 2. If I solve here, I get x equals 8. All right. Now, what am I supposed to do? Find x. Do we believe that this x value could be negative 2? No. So I'm going to go with this one, 8. Let's check. This would be 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. <coughs> and then 8 plus 4 is 12. So outside times the entire length, which is 18, is that equal to 144? And how do I get 144? 12 times 12. So I don't like it. 8. Oh, yeah, I do. 8 times 18, 144. So yes, this makes me happy and it makes you happy too. Example six. All right, let's try it again. Normally I would like you to try it on your own, but I think you need examples of this. All right, here we go. Outside times the full length is equal to the outside, which is 20, times the full length. This full length is 20 plus 25, which is 45. So x squared equals 900. All right, now, yes, I could go ahead and do a quadratic formula, set it equal to 0. But, you know, do you remember back when you had to undo squares? Yeah. Two answers. Square root. It just so happens there is a perfect square of 900. Or wait. <laughs> this is me going, what? Wait a minute. It is 30. I was thinking 9,000 for some reason there, craziness. All right, so now, can I have a negative 30? No, my answer is going to be the positive, positive 30. Oh, no. I can undo. Let me undo. Undo, please. Okay, so the answer is going to be positive 30. And once again, double check. So if I have 30 here, 30 times 30, is that the same as 20 times the full length, which is 45? We already know this was 900, and oh my gosh, this is 900 too. So yes, once again, we are happy. And that's the end.